My name is Anton van der Schuren and I come from the UC Leuven in Belgium. Today I'm going to present to you the paper that I wrote with Christophe de Weishauer, namely Are straight through gradients and soft thresholding all you need for sparse training? You may ask yourself, why another new way of pruning? Well, the justification is quite obvious. Can we do simpler than the state of the art? while doing better or at least as good without having to train for example parallel probabilities or having to tune 10 different hyperparameters when training well yes we want to achieve this so how do we go about it we applied some constraints uh, to ourselves to avoid uh, looking too broadly at every possible method so the constraints that we used were no special weight selection methods and no complex weight update scheme. So for example, you have your weights, which are sparsified before being uh, used in the network. Of course, when you have backpropagate the gradient, the gradient becomes sparse when updating the real weights too, as uh, zero weights do not influence the output. So we took a page out of the quantization literature and use a straight through estimation. This has the advantage of bypassing, bypassing the sparsification step and allowing us to update every weight that uh, contributed to the forward pass. Of course, this is not enough. As we can see here on the yellow green line, at some point we observe a layer collapse. So we have to change uh, some things and um, to minimize those uh, errors, which were due to the gradient mismatch, we applied soft thresholding and we applied a, a slight weight rescaling to um, compensate for this loss in gradient magnitude. And the results speak for themselves. On uh, CIFAR 10, here with two different uh, small networks, our method matches every other method and when we uh, use a recursive method uh, on top of our method, so this is the uh, a pink line here, we even beat the previous state of the art which was based on recursively applying uh, pruning at every step. The same can be said on ResNet 50. Here we see that when looking at the sparsity trade-off uh, in function of accuracy, our method does way better than all the others, uh, but lacks a bit in the speed of department. So this is based on uh, gigaflops. To compensate for this, we normalize the L1. Uh, so we cheat a bit compared to our uh, constraints. And we normalize uh, the L1 selection based on the number of elements in the layer to compensate for lower magnitudes uh, present in larger layers. And so this method performs slightly worse in the sparsity accuracy trade-off, but in the gigaflops uh, versus accuracy trade-off, it's better than every other state-of-the-art method. So, conclusion time. What does ST3 teach us? Well, that going back to the basics really helps with better pruning performance, but that the gradient mismatch needs to be kept in check. This method is also far from optimal for now and can be extended with any more performant weight selection algorithm.